All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Cornerman MMA with yours truly, Ryan the Mighty Quinn and Chandler the Hammer Cole. How are you, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so happy you came on. You know, and we just watched the episode where you fought. Uh, tough one. Um, I, I had you winning the first two rounds, as I know a lot of other people did. Um, uh, go ahead. Uh, you, you talk as much as you can about it. I know that you, you know, we won't talk about the future and everything, but like t- talk about uh, as much as you can about that fight. Uh, I kind of look at it in two different ways. Uh, like mm-hmm. the one side of me, which is like the, uh, the one side of me that's the fighter, that's the warrior is like, it doesn't matter if it would have been three rounds if it was a real fight, should have been ready for it. Mm. The other side of me knows like exactly what I was dealing with. You know, uh, when I threw the spinning heel kick and he hit the fence and I grabbed the guillotine, when I pulled it, I felt my elbow actually pop out of place. And I was like, oh God. So then like, I kind of got in a scramble, got up and you see me run. Cause I'm like, okay, let me get separation. Let me go back to the drawing board. Uh, mm-hmm. And then every time I was throwing an overhand right, it was popping, pow. And then you see me doing like a lot of these hand movements, like a lot of this yep. head and like arm stuff. A lot of that was just popping my elbow back into place. Like, uh, and then, uh, then you know, at the end of the second, I think, okay, fight's over, good deal. You know, they didn't even bring the stool in. You know, they didn't, <laughs> they, they, they didn't bring the stool in. Amanda's like, you won. I'm proud of you. Like, let's go. And uh, I was like, okay, thank God. And then when they said third round, I'm looking over and I'm thinking adrenaline dump. Like, yeah. The 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 motto that I live by is kill or be killed. Like I leave mm-hmm. it not to the judges. And for the first time in my career, I was content with leaving it to the judges so that I could make it to uh, so I could make it to a uh, second fight. And right. just that that went out the window. And I was like, all right, time to stand and bang. I'm sending him to the shadow realm. I've done it a couple times. Let's uh, let's go get it. And when I went out there, you know, just fought with my ego and uh, started banging and just got hit. And, you know, for two days, the funny thing, for two days, I thought I lost by knockout. Like, I thought he knocked me out cold. And uh, then they were like, I was talking to Eduardo and he was like, bro, why did you shoot? And I said, mm. shoot, what do you mean? He's like, bro, you shot. And I was like, no, I didn't. He know, he dropped me. He's like, no, nah, bro, you shot. And then, like, <laughs> I realized that I'd shot. So, uh, from when I, whenever I got clipped, man, I guess I just went on autopilot and just bad yeah. things happen. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, you're a wrestler by trade, so to speak. Um, uh, which is awesome that you coach your local wrestling team. I would always love to right. get my hands on a wrestling program. I, I was coaching the amateurs at American top team for years and I loved coaching. I absolutely love it. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, you're a wrestler by trade, and I've been there where I'm tired of rocks. I, I'm I'm shooting those double legs. I'm just going to what my body right. knows, what my body's been doing all these years. Um, uh, I I wanted to say I've been having speaking a lot about judges and stuff, and we won't get into this too much, but you know, I had um I had one of the head judges for ABC Boxing Commissions on last week, and uh, you know, judging by the criteria we spoke, yeah, I that's why I was so confident too that you won that second round because. You showed the volume, your body language was up there, the the impact, which is basically the hitting before the damage. Um, and, you know, and as I'm, I'm sure you watched the episode, uh, Dana White thought you won, Forrest Griffin thought you won, and they're like, okay, I guess we're going to the, the third round. You know, it just, um, that's the way it is. And, I'm for, and, and that setting too, where, you know, like you said, that adrenaline dump, you know, like, oh, I won. Oh, we got to get another one. It's almost like, um, like a pitcher not knowing like a pitcher in baseball, not knowing that he's going back out for the fifth or sixth inning, you know, like he's right. just putting his jacket on. But um, no, man. Um, now I, I have to ask too, just because I know coach Cammy Barzini so well. Um, I know people, has he made, has he made a comparison to your fight style to, to any legendary fighter? <laughs> no, no, uh, he, no, he has it. Uh, but I tell you who did, uh, uh, Roger did. Well, who? Okay, who did he call you? Okay. Oh my God! What was the heavyweight's name? He used to play football. Uh, oh my God! He was a white guy, bald headed. Uh, uh, okay, that's not who I was thinking of. <laughs> I was thinking of Mark Hunt. I okay, just feel well, like. <laughs> Go ahead. A lot of people. A lot of people do compare me to him. Like that's like, 
And, you know, uh, and this is the crazy thing. And, you know, that's the first time I've ever stood up in a five. Really? Wow. I've, you you could have fooled I've, me, man. <laughs> that's the first time I've ever stood up in a fight. Uh, a lot of times I just use my stand-up to set up my wrestling because I wrestled in college. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, that was the first time. Uh, and we had a game plan, you know, and I talked to Amanda, and we talked about me, you know, just getting close and then wrestling them down and getting out of their system. But I knew what I could and couldn't do. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Zach Paga, I, I don't know if you got me on uh, Instagram, but I sent out a pretty funny uh, – video of him today because you know he mm -hmm. got on there and he was saying don't judge a book by a cover but there's a yes. reason why the book has a cover and mm -hmm. uh you know i just replayed that clip and i posted a picture of him when he played football when he looks like a pre-k uh school teacher and it's like <laughs> you know no one no one in their right mind would look at him and think that he was an nfl football player but it's like don't judge a book by its cover so i was just kind of trying to humble him and he kind of got butt hurt about that but it is what it is. You know, I'm not here to make friends with him or anyone who has bad attitudes. He's an asshole anyway. So yeah, I'm not, oh, yeah, I'm not trying yeah. to be, I ain't trying to be his buddy. Like he knows what's <laughs> up. And, uh, but he kind of got butt hurt about that. But a lot of people don't know my story. You know, they look at me and they're like, God, you're overweight and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. they didn't see me when I was 2019, when I had retired, I quit fighting. I got up to 330 pounds. My life had hit rock bottom. They don't see that. And, th and that's a, that's why you don't judge a book by its cover. If you took, if they took the time to know me or know about me and, you know, go, let me go into detail. I didn't go into detail on the show out of respect mm -hmm. for, you know, my parents and, you know, my baby mama. Cause I don't want to put all that stuff on blast. There's so much more to the story that they don't know. So it's like, they don't see the progress I've made. They just want to talk about what they see in I, and, you know, and he was like, yeah, your paper book cover is soft as fuck. But it's like, mm -hmm. dude, I stayed in the house when they told me I could leave. Like every practice, my elbow was popping out. I talked to Amanda to tell her that, hey, like I can feel my elbow keeps doing this. And they mm -hmm. talked about pulling me from the fight. And that wasn't an, that wasn't even an a option. Like I'm not leaving. Like I stayed, mm -hmm. I'm not leaving. So just that is like one of those things where it's like I hate that – certain things like didn't because they only got so much film time and I wish that they could have showed yeah. me, you know, getting hurt at practice and getting hurt again at practice and, or the times I didn't even show it. And just, it's one of them things, man, just a lot Listen, of, a lot of emotions after watching it. Yeah, no, I, I can understand that. Um, you know, you're still young. You got a lot of career ahead of you, my man. Um, I, I like, yeah, the film time, but like this is the start, you know. Um, anyway, I'll get into that in a minute. I, I, I mean, I had something planned to say, but they, it did show a little bit that you and Amanda had a bit of a disconnect as to the level of of severity of your injury leading up to the fight. Um, can you touch on that a little bit? Like you wanted to taper off, and she was just kind of like, "We got to do this now." Um, what happened with that? All right, first and foremost. I really want to make it clear that me and Amanda have a great relationship. I love yeah. her to death and she has such a good heart. Yes, and she does. What, what I was trying to explain to them is when we talked to the doctor, he said a level four, a grade four complete tear. They couldn't find my ligament. They couldn't find my nerves. They couldn't find anything. It completely tore. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was still laughing and giggling and stuff like that. And they just kind of questioned how hurt I was. It was like, okay, mm -hmm. you hurt your elbow, but like, you're still smiling. You're still laughing. I'm like, no, that's cause I'm tough. That's cause I'm tough as nails. Like that's not cause mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not hurt. And uh, so I made the decision to go get an MRI done. And uh, once it came back, everybody was like, Oh, and the doctor mm -hmm. said, level four, stay off your elbow. If it was up to me, it'd be four weeks of nothing. Mm -hmm. But we don't have time for that. So just don't do certain things to hurt your elbow. And we were, when we got to practice, we were still going hard. Like, and I was still wrestling. I was still doing certain things. And to me, I was just like, I get it. But like, 
I'm trying to stay off my elbow. I'm trying to, yeah. you know, I'm trying to not get her. And I just think that's where we kind of butted heads. And I get yeah. where she's coming from. And and on the show, I, I guess I said the wrong thing when I said there's levels to this. I guess what I was saying is everyone in the house is pretty good athletes, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. you can go into, you know, I know American Top Team, you can't do this because everybody's <laughs> killers. But, like, there's some gyms you can go to and you can kind of coast with, like, lower right. level guys and kind of just not get hurt and drill. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do that there. I had Eduardo Mitch and, and Nile and you know and they they're they're dogs, you know, they're they're all, you know, pretty good athletes. So I guess that's what I was trying to explain is just like, hey, I'm not trying to, you know, be here practicing my elbow dislocate and me not be able to pop it back in. You know, if I go back to like the trainers and my elbows sitting right side up and there's no way I can pop it back in place, they're not gonna let me fight. And if right. I got this far, like why risk that? And uh, I think that's just one thing that kind of uh, I misworded or uh, I hope that she don't think that I didn't trust her. I do trust her. Well, it was just, I, was I think first of all, like you said, you and Amanda have a good relationship. So you're able to talk a little bit more freely with someone you have a good relationship with. I know how Amanda is. She's so down to earth and she, she wouldn't get offended like that. Actually, you can look up on, um, you maybe think of like being friends with Amanda. She came, she showed up on my 31st birthday and I had a fight once where I had a handlebar mustache yeah, and um, she put on a handlebar mustache at my at my birthday party and put, picked up a picture of it. It was so funny. If you, actually, I think you could Google it; it comes up. But um, so I and but like you could talk with Amanda on that level. I know how she is now. The production does a really good job of getting the right stuff for clickbait. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't beat yourself up as far as you know they they know what to get and what to make it look. You know so. Don't beat yourself up too much. Um, I had no idea the injury was that severe. That's that's crazy. But no, um, you yeah, were they so didn't play that out too. They didn't play that out either. Like you know, they just showed me talking to the doctor. But like yeah. I said, is like you know, that was a level. It was a level four. And I and yeah, now it reminds me of what I was going back to with my whole stand up. That being the first time mm-hmm. I've been training stand up my whole career. I've just not had the confidence to pull the trigger. You know, in yeah. some cases yes, some cases no. And I think that. You know, in this moment, I realized, hey, you cannot wrestle. I've tried to wrestle. I tried to wrestle practice, couldn't do it. Couldn't grab mm-hmm. a hold of stuff, couldn't turn a certain way without it popping. And I was so concerned. And I was like, you know what? Chandler, it's time to man man that fuck up, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go out there and you gotta do your thing. And so I uh I decided like, okay, I'm I'm gonna go do this. Uh I, I know that there's a chance that, you know, my stand up might not be as good as I think it is. But I think it is. I, I believe in mm-hmm. myself. So let's go see. And I surprised myself completely, dude. I was out there just it was like no disrespect to Jordan, but like I really felt like it was like I was fighting a punching bag. Like and then like him throwing back at me, I was seeing everything and just like moving my head and like yeah. moving out of everything. I felt so good. And I guess that's where the drilling dump comes from. Uh in the third is just you know, I felt like I was fine. Of course, I was breathing heavy. It, it, it's ten minutes of fine, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. But, but you know, just because you're breathing heavy doesn't mean that you're you're completely tanked. And mm-hmm. but when they said third round, I said I think my ego and my adrenaline and just the emotions all played a factor. And I just got caught up in the moment and just got clipped. And it happens on these big jobs. Man, yep, you said it. That's how the it's the one mistake. Um, you know, I, I had one fight in my career where I broke every bone in my face and I couldn't wrestle for a while or grapple. And I'm a wrestler too, so like not being able to do that's like tough for me, but like I couldn't have any pressure here. So I had all I could do is shadow and hit the bag. And um like you, like wow, my stand up's pretty good. I was I ended up developing a pretty good jab from it. So it, it's you know, you, you took the right course of action mentally in order to develop that. That's for sure. Now. All right. So we're, we're coming off a loss in the house. Now we don't know what's going to happen next. Hopefully all good things, you know, we're not going to pick at you about that. I understand how it works. Um, what you're 27, right? 27, 27, man. That's awesome. So we've seen it before where people who don't win the ultimate fight or whatever, how they come back and they have outstanding UFC careers. First person that comes to mind for me is Matt Brown. I'm a huge Matt, Matt Brown fan. Um, he didn't win the house, and now he's he, he's like five years removed from everybody else <coughs> fighting the top guys. TJ Dillashaw didn't win the house, I don't think, and he's he was champion. He's always going to be in the top uh, title contention. 
So you got a lot going for you, man. And like you just, I just saw the athleticism there. And so obviously everyone else did. Even uh, Juliana Pena said the the most beautiful spinning back kick I've ever seen. Like, yeah, because it was. Um, Like I said, you remind me a lot of Mark Hunt. You also remind me a little bit of Roy Nelson. If you can get down his overhand right, oh man, that would be like, <laughs> you, that uh, would be quite a better. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, like that. Like, um, and I, I'm sorry, not that you don't have it, but just, uh, but, but Roy had a great one. Right. Um, but um, no, man, I think the sky's the limit for you. You know, you've already come back on your career. Like you said, I didn't know that you retired, so you've already you've already brought your career back to life, and look where you are. And um, uh, something else I want to ask you. I know you got this YouTube channel. Tell us about the YouTube channel. Yeah, just uh, a normal YouTube channel. I like to do like uh, techniques of the week, which last couple weeks I've been working a lot of overtime at the prison. So I haven't been able to make uh, any content. But uh, I got mm-hmm. the uh, technique of the week. I have a Team Co show. And then I'm about to start a vlog. So uh, right. first episode should be pretty good. I got one of my uh, hometown fans wanting to get my autograph tattooed on him. So I'm going to vlog that and just let everybody share that and everybody enjoy that. So that's going to be cool. And, uh, yeah, I own my own production company. So uh, it's fun to to kind of go out and take pictures and video other things and kind of bring that to life. And, uh, yeah, man, and just, I don't know, and, and show people where I'm from. That's the that's the big thing. I really want to grow our community. You know, Great. real quick, and I'll I'll show you this if I can learn how to turn my camera around. Yeah, go or, for it. I'll, I'll just I'll just turn it this way. This is my gym, and and this is why I tell people I'm super humble. I'm in my gym right now. Yeah. This is my gym. Just that. That that awesome. that small area is is my gym, and but I'm super thankful to be here because my coaches are phenomenal and they work with me a lot. And, you know, there's times where we can't even fit all the people in this place, but Mm -hmm. this is just a start. My job, I feel like it is to share my story and let people know uh, exactly what, where, what I do, where I've come from. You know, one thing I didn't do on the house uh, just because it's such a bigger platform is uh, I didn't explain how, you know, growing up, I talked about my grandma having cancer, but I also Mm -hmm. didn't explain how both my parents were in prison. And I also didn't get to talk about how there was times when my grandma was in the hospital and I'd be having to find places to go sleep. And, you know, and there's a whole lot of stuff I just try to stay away from, but I feel like it's part of my story. And uh, I I really, uh, I hate that I didn't get to uh, explain it into full, but out of respect for them, I just didn't go into detail, but I want to grow everything in my community. And that's what I get to do through my YouTube channel. And I get to do that through me being all tough. I get to do that through owning a production company. And uh, I just want to give back to the talent gave to me. That's that's the that's the number one goal. And just show the kids, man, like it's possible. I'm, I'm a 5'10", 265 pound kid from Coburn, Virginia. <laughs> from Coburn, Virginia. Mm-hmm. That no one knows where it's at. But they're going to know. They're, everybody's going to know where my town's from. Awesome. Well, the eyes are on you, big man. And uh, I mean, I know I'm going to be watching. I subscribe to your YouTube channel and um, I can't wait to, to, to see everything you got coming up. Seriously. Um, can't wait to follow your MMA career too. You know, obviously that's why you're here. I appreciate that. So, so I appreciate yeah, man. That. So you got it guys. Here he is Chandler Cole, tough 30 vet. Um, hopefully we'll be seeing you again real soon in the octagon, but uh, let's stay in touch brother. All right. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and Roger, uh, I've talked to Roger about coming down to Florida. So, so if I come down, man, we'll have to chop it up again. You know it. You know it. I got to get back on the mats. I got to get grappling. I've been doing gi jitsu a lot, but I definitely want to get back to whatever. So if you're coming down, you let me know. I'm going to text Roger as soon as we get off. All right. Good deal. Good deal. And I love that man too. He's awesome. He's the best. Nobody's better. Yeah. Busiest man in MMA. Uh, coach, promo, uh, matchmaker, coach. <laughs> busiest I man in to MMA. Talk to, I haven't got to talk to him since the show, sadly. I need, I want to, though, because he was – he was a big help. All the pictures that you see him in mm-hmm. my ear, he literally told me the entire show. He was like, you're a dog. Listen, you're a dog. You're built for this. You're a dog. And like, yeah. he really, he made me believe that. Like, yeah. that's another reason why my standup was, he made me believe like, oh God, I am a dog. I, I'm supposed to be here. I got the most spots mm-hmm. than anyone in this house. Like I'm going to tag it to anybody. So uh, I'm blessed, man. I've got to meet great people. I have great people in my life and yeah, just sky's the limits. Awesome. All right, Chandler, have a good one, bud. You too, buddy. Bye. Yeah. Yeah.